happen to them those who were slaves and worshippers of their own desires. Nimrud also is one of them. Nimrud. Who's Nimrud? Nimrud is the one who argued with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, my Lord is the one who gives life to the dead. Nimrud said, I can give life to the dead. See, when you become a slave for your own desire. He said, how you can give life to the dead? He said, if this man is sentenced to death, I'll set him free. You see, I can give life. Ah, so Ibrahim immediately realized the foolishness of this man. Told him, okay, fine, if you can give life to the dead, my Lord brings the sun from the east. So bring it from the west. Then what happened? He failed. Also among the tips, inshallah, which will help, that one has to think of the, the results or the fruit, the fruit of following one's desires. What is the fruit? The fruit is so bitter, fear. If you follow your desire, if you follow your lusts, you always have fear in your heart. You will be always having fear in your heart. Or anxiety. Or what? Anxiety. Or depression. You will be depressed. Those people who are following the desires, they will be depressed. Inshallah, with your permission, we are going to break and we resume. Wait for us. Thank you. Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers. We were talking about the tips of which will help us by Allah's grace and by Allah's will, inshallah, to get rid of not following one's desires. Among these tips, one, as we said, we should uh, think of the consequences and the results of following one's desires and the fruit of following one's desires. The heart will be filled with fear. Fear not of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but fear of everything. You will be afraid of everything. And you will be always anxious. You have this anxiety. And also you will be depressed. And that's why you find the rate of depression among the non-believers is very high. And the depression among believers is very low. And among the Muslims is very, very, very low. And if a Muslim having this depression because he is not maintaining his salah, he's not praying, he's not having dhikr, he's not saying the dhikr, he's not engaged in dhikr, istighfar and tasbih and tahleel and takbir, which is the food for the soul and for the heart, which brings about the peace and tranquility within the individual. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear, whoever turns away from my path, he will have a miserable life. But those who lead righteous life, they will happy, have peaceful and happy life. So we have to think of the, the fruit, the bitter fruit you are going to reap by following your desires. Also, among the tips, inshallah, that when, when your nafs ask you to do this thing, to follow the desire to do something haram, put yourself in the shoes of the other person. Just put yourself in the shoes of the other person. What does this mean? Put yourself in the position of the other person. For instance, if you are going to have an illicit, illicit relationship with a woman, put yourself if you are the husband of that woman, or the brother of that woman, or the father of that woman, will you accept it? The answer, no. That's why when the young boy came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, إِذَن لِيْفِ zina. Imagine someone comes to the Prophet وسلم, and he says, Oh Prophet of Allah, gives me permission. I want to fornicate. I want to adulterate. I want to commit zina. So give me permission to do that. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he asked the boy, Do you accept that for your mother? He said, No. Of course. He said, do you accept it for your sister? He said, no. Any of your relatives? He said, no. He said, also the people, they don't accept it for their families. They don't accept it for their mothers. They don't accept it for the daughters. They don't accept that for their sisters. And then he said to the boy, come. And he placed, the Prophet ﷺ, he placed his hand on the chest of the boy. And he said, Allahumma tahir qalba wa hassin farija. Allahu Akbar. 
This is the mercy of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi He put his hand on the chest of this young man and he said, Oh Allah, purify his heart, purify his heart and protect his private parts. Protect his private parts and purify his heart. And all that feeling which the boy had, gone, vanished. So whenever you, your nafs and your desires, they want you to do something, assume that this is happening to you. You will not accept it. So the people also, they don't like that and they will not accept it. Also among the tips, one should think of the disgrace that you will bring upon yourself. Disgrace, you will be disgraced, you will be humiliated. Don't think, ever think, that you will be sinning and following your own desires and Allah will leave you like that. And you will remain having a good position in the community, in the society, respected by the people, never. And history tells us this, a reality. How many people, many people who were in big positions, but they were following their own desires. They had scandals. And every day in newspapers, we read scandal, scandal, scandal. Who exposes them? Who exposes them? Allah. Because Allah will give you enough rope to hang yourself with it. And then all of a sudden, he will expose you to the public. People will know the reality of you. Though you have been misleading the people, cheating, deceiving them. But then Allah will expose you. And everyone will come to know about your reality. So think of that. Don't think you can escape. 